Welcome to an introduction to our Victorian estate, Zayer Estate. Established at 208 Shemung Street, on the west corner of Shemung and Athens Streets, in the village of Waverly, town of Barton, Tioga County, New York, the gateway of Southern New York, off of Interstate 86, and located between the Shemung and the Susquehanna Rivers, is encountered Zayer Estate. This estate has been under restoration since the summer of 2010 as the time and money allows, for my husband and I are doing this labor of love ourselves. Just look at the details, so much artistry yearning to be revitalized. As I gaze, I can visualize the elegance that awaits, the enchantment as I continue to investigate each and every detail. The sawtooth pattern is said to be a hallmark of the East Lake style, as are the ornamentations, pendants, pent hoods, and the flower and geometric shapes. The camphored corners with lark's tongue and the low relief carving. And yet, when standing from across the street, I get a gothic feel to the home. It appears to me as a home of high Victorian elaboration with a distinguished gothic appearance, yet without the specific gothic elements. We found these initials carved into the high peak on the west side of the home. The roof retains most of the original slate, with some pieces having been replaced. Meet Zaire Estates' enchanting East Empress. Four generations of the Slaughter family remained in this home for 88 years, from 1857 to 1945. This East Lake style Victorian home was given as a wedding gift from DeWitt Slaughter to his son, Samuel Wickham Slaughter and his bride, Charlotte Wells Slaughter, in 1873. Samuel Slaughter's estate later consisted of the main house, the carriage house, a two-family octagon rental house, and the mystery outbuilding of today, plus two other buildings that are no longer standing, a stable or a barn, along with another small building. The estate now consists of the main house, the former carriage house, now known as Whimsical Haven, the original mystery outbuilding with attached storage spaces, now known as Alluring Artiste, and in place of the missing Octagon home, which disappeared sometime between 1933 and around 1945, is a 1950 ranch-style home now known as the Blissful Bungalow. In 1824, prior to the current buildings on this estate, was Aaron Jackson's blacksmith shop on the site of the main house. Mr. Jackson had his shop here from about 1824 to around 1835. He was a blacksmith from Brookfield, Orange County, New York. Once in this area, he became an ordained minister and it was said that he was ordained in his blacksmith shop, kneeling over his own anvil. Before the blacksmith shop was here, all of the land at Zara Estate had been part of Isaac Shepard's farmland in 1813. Elder Aaron Jackson sold the property to Gilbert and Philippine Halla in 1935. When the Hallets purchased the land, it also included today's 5 and 3 Athens Street land. The Hallets farmland included 45 acres all south of Shemung Street. Besides the blacksmith shop, most of our property here in 1833 was said to have been a field of oats. By 1840, the corner of Waverly and Shemung Streets, just to the west of this estate, was a flourishing business community. And our property here, along with the property next door, included some of the original buildings, such as the blacksmith shop. The business section remained here until the Erie Railroad came, and then around 1852, the businesses just to the west moved down to Broad Street. The few blocks on either side of this original corner were foremost real estate. This area was up until 1840 or 1845 called Villamont, named by Isaac Shepard.
1846, Andrew Rice purchased the property from the Hallets. Andrew Rice's Octagon home was built on Chemung Street, just west of today's main home. Andrew Rice was a foundry man. He had a wife, Eliza Rice, three sons, George, Henry, and Arthur, and a daughter, Frances. Mr. Rice probably had the blacksmith shop taken down sometime between 1846 and 1850. In January of 1850, the Commissioner of Highways for the town of Barton, County of Tioga, State of New York, at Waverly, Hiram Bloodgood, ordered that a highway be laid out in Waverly along Broad Street at a width of four rods. He also ordered a width of three rods along Pennsylvania Avenue and along Tioga and Athens streets of three rods widths on the application of Owen Spaulding and by the consent of Isaac Shepard, Benjamin W. Davis, Owen Spaulding, Robert Swain, John Shackleton, F. H. Sutton, Edward Sutton, Job Hewlett, Gilbert H. Hallett, and Joseph E. Hallett, through whose improved lands the highways were to pass through. In 1850, Andrew Rice sold off part of his property at the corner of Shemung and Athens Streets, the site where our main house is today, to Thomas Jefferson Brooks and his wife, Cynthia Lauman Brooks, who had a rectangular-shaped home built here. Our current home incorporates Mr. Brooks's home, Thomas Brooks was born in Ostego County, New York. In 1852, he opened a general store on Broad Street. In April of 1853, he was one of the men to make a formal application to incorporate the village of Waverly, which was incorporated in 1854. Mr. Brooks became a ticket agent and paymaster for the railroad. Thomas and his wife had one daughter, Lillian Rosamond Brooks, who was three years old in 1850. Living with them was also Joseph Byers, 13 years old, and Henry McCain, 18 years old. It is said that Waverly owed its existence to the construction of the Erie Railroad. Neighboring Sayre and Athens, Pennsylvania were dependent on Waverly as a main center of trade at that time. Waverly, New York, along with Sayre and Athens, Pennsylvania, are together known as the Valley. In 1856, Mr. Rice sold off the land of today's 5 and 3 Athens Street as one empty lot. In 1858, Andrew Rice sold the Octagon home on Chemung Street to Amelia and Henry Foster, and just four months later, the Fosters sold the Octagon home to Edwin Mills, who most likely was DeWitt Slaughter's brother-in-law. Interesting is that the Fosters also bought 5 and 3 Athens Street, and that the land again had went with the Octagon home sale to Edwin Mills. Mr. Mills sold the Octagon home in 1875. In 1857, DeWitt Slaughter purchased the Brooks home. The home at that time was a much smaller home and most likely very plain and modest. DeWitt added on to the Brooks home, and by 1869, the shape of the foundation of the home matched it as it is today. It was in 1873 that DeWitt Slaughter hired Azariah J. Vanetta to design and make the changes to the home that gave it its Eastlake appearance and style it maintains today. DeWitt had this done as a wedding gift to his son Samuel Slaughter. Azariah J. Vanetta was an architect and contractor who died in 1913 at the age of 85. He was born in Barton, New York, the son of John and Elizabeth Albright Vanetta. He was the ninth child in a family of 11 children. He married Miss Carlista Ames in 1850 and then moved at once to Waverly. In 1867, he joined the Waverly Lodge 407 F and A M and in 1871 was chosen worthy master of that body. Besides being a member of the Masonic Lodge in Waverly, he was a member of St. Omar's Commandery Knights Templar of Elmira, New York. When DeWitt Slaughter came to Waverly, he was a retired, wealthy farmer from Hamptonburg, Orange County, New York. He came here with his wife, Carolyn Mills Slaughter, and their two children, Samuel, 20 years old, and Antoinette, 10 years old. DeWitt and Carolyn had three more children who all died at young ages, prior to them moving to Waverly. About four and a half years after moving here, in November of 1861, Mrs. Slaughter died. DeWitt was a village trustee in 1864. Not quite five and a half years later, after Mrs. Slaughter's death, their daughter, Antoinette, died in March of 1868 at the age of 21. About seven and a half years after Antoinette's death, DeWitt Slaughter died in 1875. 
DeWitt had lived in the home for 18 years. Back in 1857, Samuel Slaughter was 20 years old when he had come to Waverly with his parents and sister. He had been educated at Chester and Middletown Academies prior to coming to Waverly. In Waverly, he engaged in the drugstore business and for over 30 years occupied the corner drugstore at the corner of Broad and Waverly Streets. On May 13, 1873, Samuel married Miss Charlotte Wells, the youngest daughter of Mr. Alfred Wells of Goshen, New York, a lady whose sterling qualities of womanhood were well fitted to make his home life pleasant and attractive. Samuel and Charlotte had one child, a daughter, Mary Gertrude. Mr. Slaughter was a leader in the commercial interest of Waverly. His biography said, that as a citizen, Mr. Slaughter enjoyed to its fullest extent the confidence and respect of his fellow townsmen. Naturally of a retiring disposition, he always refused positions of public honor, yet he was ever interested in affairs, and with every plan whose purpose was the commercial or spiritual prosperity of the village. His name was closely associated with wise counsel and generous contribution. In the few civil and educational offices he was persuaded to fill, his promptness, clear judgment, and accurate intuitions gave evidence of his preeminent ability to fill any station with credit and honor. His long connection with the Citizens Bank of Waverly, of which he was vice president from its organization in 1874 until his death on August 24, 1894, demonstrated that he possessed the characteristics of a successful financier. His nature was both studious and artistic, and his beautiful home and place of business bore ample testimony to his correct taste and his love of the beautiful. His business sagacity and his skill in investing brought him wealth, which his generous nature forbade him to hoard. His ear was ever open to the tale of the deserving poor, and those who needed sympathy and aid were bountifully and delicately supplied. He was truly the poor man's friend and at his death among the most sincere mourners were the many whose lives had been brightened and cheered by his Christian benevolence. In 1874, he made public profession of his Christian faith by joining the First Presbyterian Church of Waverly. For many years, he served as a member of the Board of Trustees, and to his business qualities and generosity, this church is largely indebted for the high position it occupies. In his church life, Mr. Slaughter was a man of few words, but of generous impulses and noble actions. Mr. Slaughter was taken to Phillipsburg, Orange County, New York, for burial. But four years later, in 1898, Samuel Slaughter's remains, which had been resting in a vault in Phillipsburg Cemetery, were sent for and brought back to Waverly for burial in Glenwood Cemetery. The Octagon Home had been moved by Samuel Slaughter in 1879. He had purchased it in 1877 from John S. Conkling and his wife Adeline. The sale of the Octagon Home included the lands of today's 7 Athens Street and the western part of today's 9 Athens Street. Samuel had the Octagon Home moved from Shemung Street down around the corner to 7 Athens Street in order to make a private park next to his home on Shemung Street. Samuel Slaughter had the stone sidewalks laid down in 1878 from quarries in Laceyville, Pennsylvania. It was at the same time that the carriage step, or as a newspaper called it, the horse block, and the hitching post were put out in front of the home. We have not found the hitching post, but we uncovered the carriage step in pieces by accident. For now, we are using the pieces as an inner sidewalk on the property. Carved on the edge of it is the slaughter name. The crown of the home, the iron cresting, was added in 1883. It was cast in Waverly by Francis and Hall's foundry. The iron cresting was in bad condition and very loose and during a storm a piece had fallen onto the slate roof. We had no choice but to dismantle the crown. We have the pieces and will someday restore the crown. View Part 2 and Part 3 of Our Victorian Estate.